The migration system is perhaps one of the most impactful mechanics to ever come to the Isle. Right now, in the stress test, they may be a bit borked for any number of reasons, but hey, that's what the stress test is for. But when they are functioning properly, they are a complete game changer. One thing that has surprised me is just how flexible the migration system seems to be, with zones seemingly being able to be placed just about anywhere. With the system still being tinkered with, I think now is a good time for me to give my thoughts on how migrations should be implemented and what factors I believe the developers should take into account when choosing where to place migration zones. So first we have to ask a few important questions. What factors contribute to a location being a viable migration zone? How many migrations should a playable have? where exactly do we want migration zones to be, and how far away should they be from each other? And how long should a migration last? What makes for a viable migration zone? In my opinion, a migration zone needs three things to be viable. A distinct location, unique slash varied terrain, and a water source. A distinct location is the visual flair of a migration zone. You should be able to take one look at it and go, yep, that's Swamp, that's River Delta, that's Highlands, that's Northeast Plains, that's South Plains, etc. A migration zone that has no identity is one without personality. Luckily, Gateway has a considerable number of interesting locations, while monotonous transient areas are far less common than they were on Spiro. Uniqueness slash variation in terrain refers to a zone either having an entirely unique terrain or not being completely uniform in terms of foliage and terrain features. A flat featureless plain or endless dense jungle doesn't give the player much to work with, but when a zone includes a little bit of both, you achieve variety. Even a location that is solely plains or forest can be spiced up with a road, a lake, or river, or some other major landmark. A location like Swamp can be exempt from this rule, getting away with having fairly uniform terrain because it is such a unique location in and of itself. And finally, a source of water is essential for a zone to be viable. Migrations ensure that the need for food is met, thus the need for water must also be met by these zones, or else players will be forced to make many migrations just to go get water, or completely abandon the zone if there's just no water anywhere around. With these factors in mind, let's look at a few migration zones and places that aren't currently migration zones and see how they fare by these metrics. So River Delta, distinct location. Check, it sits at the mouth of the Central River, it is an entirely distinct zone containing fields of reeds, sandy shores, distributary channels from the river, it's got that locked down. Unique slash varied terrain. Check, the river delta features not only varied, but unique terrain. The reed fields and the distributary channels are a completely unique feature to this location. And the transition from tall grasses to sandy shores adds a little bit more variety. Water source. Check. It, it's a river delta. There's a lot of water here. I'd rate this an A. Highlands J sector. Distinct location. Check. It's one of the two regions with dry grass and shrubbery. It has a distinct central clearing surrounded by shrubbery. Unique slash varied location. Check. Once again, it's got the wide open central clearing. It's got shrubbery on the sides. It has a number of large rocks on either side of the zone. Some you can jump up, some you can't really, but they break up the region a little bit, making it less of just an open plain. So, okay, it's got that. Water source. Eh. Inside the zone, there is actually no source of water. And the three closest sources of water are all roughly the same distance from the zone. But ironically, two of them are other migration zones entirely, so yeah, I gotta bump it down to a C rating this. West Rail Access. So, distinct location? Eh? Nothing really pops out here, but there's nothing particularly egregious either. It's a rather plain area, but it still has like some sort of vestige of it, uh, its own personality, if that makes any sense. Unique slash varied terrain. 
Check is sports a blend of plains and forests with significant slopes surrounding the road winding through the forest leading here. Like, nothing about this zone is unique, but just how varied its little area is with generic stuff like forests and plains, it still allows it to be good by this metric. Water source. Check, it's got a small pond that provides water to the zone. Overall, I'd rate it a B. And now, East Jungle. Distinct location? Nope. Only defining features are the aviary and ocean nearby, otherwise it's it's just jungle. Like, it, it's just jungle. Unique slash varied terrain? Nope, it's just jungle. There's like, no variation, it's just one slope of just jungle. Water source? Also a nope, the closest sources of water are the Central River and East Plains, which are both a good distance away from the zone. I mean, heck, they necessitate a proper migration just to get a drink. Like, you just, you can't live in this zone, you have to leave to get water. So it's getting an F. Waterfalls, not a current migration zone. Distinct location? Check. It is a series of waterfalls connecting water access to the main body of the Central River, with each success pool having its own features. Unique slash varied terrain? Check. While being completely surrounded by forests, the river provides variety, and the series of waterfalls is a unique feature to the area. Water source? Check. It's literally a river. Like, I I'm giving this an A rating. And please, I beg of you, add a Beppy migration here. This place was built for Beppy. Please, look how much fun this goofy little duck can have here. Please give Beppy a reason to actually travel upstream. I beg of you, please, I am going insane every moment that my beloved Beppy is deprived of the joy that is this zone. Please. River Fork. Not a current migration zone. Distinct location? Check. It's saying at the fork of the river, it's at a crossroads of the map, and this sort of quirk of the terrain makes its location distinct. Unique slash varied terrain? Check, this location offers a good blend of open grasslands and hilly forests, and further variety is added by the river, its shores, the little islands, just all of that. Water source, check, once again, it's a river, but on top of that it has a nice little secluded pond as well. I'm rating this an A. So how many migrations should an individual playable have? I would argue that the bare minimum is three. If you only have two migration zones, then all you're doing is running from point A to point B, then from point B back to point A for all eternity. You're just running in a straight line between two areas, only ever interacting with three areas of the map total, the two migration zones and the area between them. But if you have three migration zones, suddenly everything changes. Now instead of a straight line, you have a circuit. You're not just going right back to where you were before, but somewhere else entirely. The addition of just one more zone doubles the number of areas you're interacting with, the one new migration zone, and the two areas between it and the other two zones. While three zones is the bare minimum, it could be argued that at least four migration zones are more ideal. If there's going to be any randomization of what migration zone you go to next, then four is the minimum for such a system. With only three zones, your only option is literally the place you were just at, or a new area. You either go ABC or ABAC. That's it. With four zones, you now have the option of two areas you haven't been to recently, so you can go ABCD, or ABDC, or ADCB, you know, etc. So having established that we need at least three migration zones for a playable, how do we go about placing them around the map? We must take into account three factors. Is the zone viable? Do they fit with the desired range of the playable? And are the distances between migration zones far enough to justify a proper migration and encourage exploration? I've already gone over viability, so let's look at the desired range of a playable. We'll start with Paki and Tino, since they have the most well-established identities in that regard. Paki is envisioned as a coastal animal. Now, who knows, maybe there's still time for Paki to become a demented mountain goat, but right now they are envisioned as inhabiting coastal plains and palm forests. So let's highlight all of the areas that are viable migration zones that fill this niche. Alright, there's a lot to work with here. We could do a full circuit of the island, limit Paki to the eastern or the western ends of the island, 
or make an exception to the rule of desired range and add a wildcard zone. While the vast majority of each playable's migration zones should play to its strengths, I believe that there should be at least one zone in rotation where it is out of its element. So for Packy, let's say it has to go all the way up to River Fork at some point. Now we make a basic circuit, and suddenly Packy needs to traverse much more diverse terrain to get to and from this singular zone. Add randomization into the mix, and we have a robust region of the map for Packy, even while keeping it locked just to one side of the map. And you don't necessarily need to have it stuck just on this side of the map. I'm just using this as an example of what you could do. Now let's look at Tino. Snontosaurus is not semi aquatic Aquatic, but it is very at home by the water. Swamps and river deltas are its bread and butter. Now, this may look awfully linear because, well, it's a river, but when you add random variations in what migration is chosen next, you suddenly get a lot of mileage with just these five zones. And you know what? Now, let's add two wild cards into the mix. Let's say Highlands and North Plains. Wait, not North Plains, Northeast Plains. And boom! More variety, and Tino occasionally gets taken out of the element. It spends most of its time in the place where it's at home. But every once in a while, it's gotta go somewhere way out there. A significant distance between migration zones is something that is also necessary for a good migration. Let's look at Stego's current migrations and see where it goes wrong. Just... Yikes. They're all right next to each other in a straight line. That's not a migration, that's a leisurely stroll next door. In fact, if you're in Highlands J Sector, two of your three options for water are literally your other migration zones. That's how close they are. You have to do a whole migration just to get water. Migrations should be arduous journeys that make you travel long distances to new and exciting locations, not this. In fact, if you've been paying attention to the background footage, the distance is so short that in the time that I have been talking about this, I have traveled from Highlands I Sector to Highlands J Sector in the background this whole time. The entire migration takes quite literally one minute to do. I mean, sure, I'm playing Galley, Galley's fast, but yeah, they're that close together. I think a solid rule for placing migrations is to never put consecutive migrations in adjacent zones. It really ruins, like, the whole thing with migrations when you're just walking on over to the next field over. And I think, in an ideal world, a new migration zone would be far enough for your, from your current one for the journey to wipe out, say, half of your hunger bar. Now, is that really possible to implement and balance properly? Probably not, because different playables, different speeds, and hunger rates, and thirst strain, just, yeah, it would just be way too much effort than it's worth to, like, implement something like that. But, like, you get the point. A migration should be an actual undertaking that requires at least the slightest bit of preparation, or else, you know, you're gonna slow down your herd, or be left behind because you need to graze to keep from starving, or you have to stop for water, like, if you don't, you know, fill up before you leave, you might be at a disadvantage later. So, okay, let's go about fixing this. So let's axe the Highland Sector in the middle there from Stego's Migrations. Okay, already an improvement. We've added just distance. Now, of course, we can't leave them with two migrations, so let's just give it a couple more zones a bit further out. And boom, look at that. Now Stego has to actually traverse the map, seeing diverse locations and navigating interesting terrain like rivers and mountains in order to get to its zones, rather than walking down a single road or canyon. Now, I'm not saying this is like the best ideal thing, this is just why came up with now, like, they'll have to look into how it interacts with other migrations and all of that jazz. This is just a general idea. Heck, I might make a video of just like my ideal migrations, maybe that'd be a cool thing to do. Take forever to make. <laughs> but alright, uh, getting back on topic. Now we come to the final question. How long should migrations last? If they are too long, then players get bored being trapped in one location for hours on end. If they are too short, then it leads to irritation, as the migration zone constantly changes while you're still en route, 
and you are unable to enjoy the zone or partake in nesting because you're ripped away from it the moment you get there. Right now they last roughly two hours, but can be shorter if a significant portion of the food in the zone is eaten, though that requires a pretty big herd or a lot of animals getting the same migration zone at the same time, at least with the current values. And the remaining food in the zone will remain for a half hour after the zone changes. Now this is a good start. But in my opinion, two hours is a long time to spend in a single zone, especially if you don't have the numbers to manually change the zone by eating it down. That's enough time for any current herbivore minus Stegosaurus to be able to go from a fresh spawn to fully grown while living entirely in one migration zone. I would suggest that the migration timer be experimented with to find an optimal time, but just giving my ballpark estimates that I'm just throwing out here, let's say 1 hour and 30 minutes. The length of a migration zone needs to account for how long it takes to nest, as that is the longest activity that players can partake in. And I believe that 1 hour and 30 minutes plus the time that food remains afterwards, let's just assume that it stays for 30 minutes like it does currently, I mean, that's plenty of time for people to nest, while also not trapping players in one zone for too long. This means that fresh spawns and players nested in will still be juvies or sub-adults by the time they need to go out on the road again. And before the stress test, I wasn't all that excited about migrations, it was just sort of like a feature I didn't really- it wasn't really on my radar. I was just thinking, new map, new dinos, like, ah, those are like the crazy things. Migrations, like, what's that? But after playing with them and seeing what this system can do when it's working properly, I'm honestly hyped. Like, this is something that, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is unique to the Isle. And it has the potential to bring this game up to a whole nother level. I hope this video has been informative and helps either the devs or people running unofficial servers if they get the ability to tinker with migration zones on their own servers. Uh, to better implement this system, because it really is something that will make the game so much better if it's done right.